Hello, my name is Jesse Neubauer, and welcome to my online food ordering database, the final project for our databases course. So I'm here to walk you through the features and descriptions and design choices of my database. I'm assuming that at this point you have already run the creation script and the script which will populate some example data into the database. And let's get into the meat of it. Food pun intended. With any food ordering app, which I'm assuming this database is intended to be the driving force behind an app, I started by focusing on the dishes that would be ordered. So I have a table for dishes. It kind of is the foundation of the database. As you can see, it links to just about every other category, or at least the ones were relevant. Um, for dishes, I have a list of categories that will help to categorize the dishes onto different portions of a menu. Um, here we have a pivot table that will link each specific menu to the dishes contained therein. And each menu should come with like a template that will show the categories and, and then can sort the dishes in the menu based on the category that the dish has. So the dishes are self-sorting, as it were. Once a menu is created, it is uh, claimed by any restaurant that is assigned to use that menu and the restaurant claiming it must be of the same franchise as the menu it is claiming. Likewise the dishes must also be of the same franchise as the menu that they are being assigned to. Over here, we can see that we get more into the restaurant back end of things. We have the restaurant managers. Um, this is a pivot table of each specific restaurant location and the relationship that there is between that restaurant and the managers who work there. Um, for instance, at higher levels of management, you may have one manager who oversees several stores. At lower levels of management, you may have several managers who oversee a single store. So here we have manager permissions that describe that relationship as is seen in this pivot table. And likewise, of course, each manager should only be assigned to a single franchise if a single manager happens to be at restaurants across more than one franchise. I think that's considered a conflict of interest and they may have to get HR involved. So there's not a database constraint set up for that, but that is a business constraint. This would be the list of all of their managers. Um, again, a manager may have a higher position with a specific restaurant location than they do with another one. So the permission level is based on the manager restaurant relationship pairing. The, uh, losing my words here, the primary key that is a composite of the two primary keys put together. Over here we have administrator land. Um, these are the people who run the database and the online food ordering app itself, who are not tied to any one franchise restaurant or anything else. At this time, I only have a single level of administrator, which is just myself. Uh -huh as the app would potentially grow and require more staff at a later time we may have to add more administrator levels um, security and permission levels but those aren't required at this time so i don't have a table for them yet but that can always be added and here of course we have our audit table to demonstrate the addition updating or deletion of any additional administrators Now, once a menu has been populated with dishes and has been selected by a restaurant, it is available for use in ordering. 
An order is, of course, created by a customer and has contents that are dishes that have been selected from the menu. The order will be assigned to a courier who is in a status code that will show them available to take a new order. And that will be assigned via algorithm that I have not yet learned how to make, but I have heard that it happens. I have a friend who was actually working on that exact algorithm, so that's pretty exciting. Um, the order will have a status for each of its moving components, and I have created a view called Order Summary. Let's take a look at that. Where did it go? Under Views. And this view is sort of um, a summary of what each customer would be probably concerned with as far as their own order. It contains a list of all of the dishes that are in their order. It has the price of each dish and a running total of the price for all of the dishes in their order. So it can also be sorted by order. Of course, we can sort it by the customer who ordered it. Right now, I only have a single order per customer, but as you go on and you get repeat customers, you'll have multiple orders per customer. And as you can see, each order is relegated to a single restaurant. That's another business constraint. As things stand right now, I don't have any method that I've learned yet to constrain the database to containing only dishes that are on the same menu and thus constraining them to a single restaurant location. So that's something that would need to be uh, constrained in the customer ordering interface. I'm assuming that, again, that this database would be the, the foundation underneath an, an actual like mobile app that would be used for ordering food. So there would be an app for customers to log into and place orders with. There would be um, a couriers app for the couriers to log into and earn a paycheck. And then there would be, I, I don't know if it would be an app so much as maybe a, a back-end website where restaurant managers of varying levels could log in to either set up a terminal in their restaurant and accept the orders and mark them at the very stages of completion and also at the upper levels of management to edit you know the restaurants attributes the the menu contents the logos the templates the designs the wording etc etc you'll also notice that i have given each dish a base price and I've also given each restaurant a price multiplier. So you'll see that over here in the order summary. Again, base price times a multiplier adds that much to the order. I also had a column at one point that was labeled local price, but I decided it didn't add very much value. And it wasn't needed in the calculations, so I took it out. And that pretty much completes the summary of my database. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave me any comments, and uh, thank you for your wonderful instruction.